I get a lot of questions on my YouTube videos, and uh, Travis asked a really good one. I usually answer those questions via text or email, but I thought I'd shoot a video to answer Travis because it's a much easier way to do so. Okay, so his question is regarding uh, superheat, subcooling, and the refrigeration process video that we shot several months ago. And he wanted to know about the temperature of the refrigerant coming out of the compressor and shouldn't it be much lower, like around 115 degrees Fahrenheit? He asked that, and states that if it were 200 degrees Fahrenheit, then going down to 105 degrees just before the metering de device would mean that it had a 95 degree of, of subcooling. So let's take a look at what uh, what he's talking about and see if I can answer his question. First of all, subcooling. Subcooling is um, cooling the saturated liquid below the condensing temperature. And remember that the condensing temperature of the refrigerant is when we remove heat, it condenses from vapor to liquid. And then we measure the amount of subcooling by subtracting the temperature of the liquid, leaving the condenser by clamping our temperature probe on the liquid line and we subtract it from the condensing temperature, which is the temperature that we would be reading on our gauges based on the pressure temperature relationship of, of the refrigerant. So this is the video uh, diagram that Travis was referring to. And it's, he's talking about right here we have 278 PSIG and 200 degrees Fahrenheit of uh, temperature on the refrigeration line leaving the compressor and then we only had 20 degrees of subcooling here so just to get give a little reference on this diagram this is the wall of a home for example this is the indoor unit uh, air handler and evaporator coil this is the outdoor condensing unit so let's just break this down uh, so it's a little bit more clear just remember right here, this is our superheated vapor coming from the evaporator coil inside the house. And now we have just the outdoor unit that we need to talk about. So this is our superheated vapor coming from the evaporator coil. This superheated vapor enters the compressor and is compressed. And when we compress that gas, it increases the pressure and it increases the temperature. And in this diagram here, in this example, we have increased the pressure to 278 PSIG and the temperature leaving of the, the re superheated gas leaving the compressor is 200 degrees Fahrenheit. Now this refrigerant is not yet at its condensing temperature. It is still superheated. So at the beginning portion of the condensing coil, we are getting rid of that super heat that we picked up over here in the evaporator. So it is shedding sensible heat. So as it travels through this portion of the condensing coil, it is dropping the temperature from 200 degrees Fahrenheit to 190 degrees Fahrenheit. And, at, and it continues to drop towards its condensing temperature. Now let's take a look. We have 278 PSIG pressure. Let's see what the condensing temperature is for 278 PSIG. All right, so we're using R22 refrigerant, which is this column right here. But we're going to have to go over here and find 278. There it is. 277.9, which is 278 R22. Our temperature is in this column here, so let's follow it over. So our refrigerant at 278 PSIG will begin to condense, which means change from vapor to liquid at 125 degrees. Okay, so as our superheated vapor begins to cool down and travel through the condenser. When it hits 
125 degrees and it's at its condensing temperature it will start to change state from vapor to liquid and it does so throughout the condensing coil so it's changing state vapor to liquid vapor to liquid vapor to liquid vapor to liquid until it is at at this point 100 percent liquid then through the tail end of that condenser it starts to dump a little of the sensible heat and by the time it reaches the metering device that liquid refrigerant is down to 105 degrees Fahrenheit so if we take our condensing temperature which is 125 degrees Fahrenheit and we saw that on our pressure temperature diagram we subtract the temperature of the refrigerant as it leaves the condenser which is 105 degrees Fahrenheit we end up with 20 degrees of subcooling now Travis I hope that answers your question and I hope this helps anybody else who doesn't didn't quite understand the subcooling process so please remember subscribe to my YouTube channel and if you have any questions go ahead and post them up there and I will shoot some videos to answer your questions. Alright, see you on the next video.